Hey everyone, it's Erin. Uh, it's been a bit since I did my first Baking with Hoopla video and so I thought I'd do another. Uh, something happened this week that inspired one. Before I get into that story, I just want to remind you if you haven't had a chance to check out Hoopla, I really recommend that you do. Uh, you can get to it by going to the library's homepage. You just scroll under the big banner. And you're gonna see it there as one of the four icons or graphics that are there just under the banner. Uh, so go there, sign up, you'll use your library barcode. If you need one of those, you're going to go to the library's website and go to our card sign up, or you can just email us at library at avalonfreelibrary.org. So I uh, decided this week that I was gonna bake something this weekend, and then when I was scrolling through Instagram, I saw that one of the bloggers I follow, Bakerita, I was reminded that her cookbook came out recently, and I was on hold for it at the Avalon Library, of course, but unfortunately the release date was just a bit after we closed. And so, no, no library, no book, or so I thought. And so what I did this week, I happened to be in Hoopla, I did a quick search for the title, and lo and behold, there it was. So, so a really happy surprise. And uh, Bakerita focuses on a lot of like modern healthy baking. So if that's not your thing, you know, just enjoy the video and go to Hoopla and you'll find something else I'm sure that you will enjoy. But the other nice thing is I'm seeing lots of recipes online for alternative ingredients. I know some want to be a little bit more practical in our shopping. So the fun part about this is it's dairy-free and it's grain-free. It uses almond flour, flax eggs. It's pretty flexible though. I've made it a few different ways. Um, I haven't told you what I'm making. Almond flour chocolate chip cookies. I have some paleo chocolate chip cookies. The thing that this made me think of was I have a lot of different recipes I love that use very few ingredients and they're easy to make, hopefully with maybe some assemblage of pantry staples. So what I'm gonna do is write a quick blog post for this video um, and share it with Sean, he'll put it up on the blog, and just some recommendations for recipes that I think you might uh, enjoy and hopefully you have the ingredients for them. So here we go, uh, we're gonna make some cookies. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so I have my ingredients together, and if you wanna bake these and need the details, uh, don't forget, you can go to Hoopla, you're gonna look for, search for the cookbook, Bakerita, and these are her paleo chocolate chip cookies. I cream together the oil and sugar, add in the egg and vanilla, and then we're going to incorporate the flour, baking soda, and salt, and finally fold in the chocolate chips. At the very end, we're gonna cover it and let it hang out in the fridge for at least an hour. It can, it can go for a day, it can go for even a little longer, I've done it, and it definitely makes a difference. Okay, so you're gonna wanna blend the oil and coconut sugar together until it looks pretty smooth, just like this. And now we're ready for the egg. Okay, I've added the egg and the vanilla, and now I'm gonna give it another spin and make sure it's all nice and smooth. And like I said, I realize right now, with ingredients being what they are, you know, you might have regular eggs but not flax eggs or you might have i'm laughing right now because my mom who's an amazing baker definitely has real eggs but not flax eggs um, but for example when i started making this recipe i thought i was going to do it without vanilla because i thought i was out i luckily found an emergency bottle uh stashed away so it's pretty flexible and forgiving and that's going to be the basis for the other recipes that i share on the blog even if this one doesn't quite uh, work with what you've got hopefully something there will work for you Okay, so after you've added in the egg and vanilla, the goal is something that looks a bit like this. I gave uh, the bottom of the bowl a scrape with a spatula about halfway through um, just to make sure everything was nicely incorporated. Now we're gonna add the almond flour, baking soda, and salt. Okay, so now we're ready to mix these together. With some recipes, it tells you to be careful. You don't wanna overdo it. But with almond flour, the rules are a little different. But I do wanna share a trick that I love, and that is that you, especially for a recipe that makes a lot of things or you have a pretty full mixing bowl um, when you're incorporating the dry ingredients, it can be great to give the mixer a little bit of a pulse just to get things incorporated so that you don't end up with flour all over your kitchen. Okay, it's looking pretty well incorporated, and I think we're ready to fold in the chocolate chips. Okay, so here we go, and I've thrown a little plastic wrap on top. I'm gonna toss it in the fridge, and like I said, you're gonna wanna leave it in there for at least an hour. I might actually wait until tomorrow and finish these up on Sunday, we'll see. Uh, but either way, I recommend the chill, but it's not completely necessary. I've definitely made these uh, before without doing it, so. 
Okay, so it's been more than an hour, but less than a day because why have cookies tomorrow if you can have them tonight? Um, I've got two baking sheets ready with parchment paper and I'm gonna scoop these cookies uh, bigger than like a couple tablespoons uh, size. Uh, that's the size of the cookie scoop I'm using. Uh, the oven is at 350, I preheated it and these will go in for about anywhere from 10, 12, maybe maybe 15 minutes if I made them really big, but the size the size I made, I'm guessing about 10 to 12 minutes. And so you're really looking for golden brown edges. So that's, that's, what, that's what we're aiming for. Okay, so we're all set to go in the oven. I um, scooped them out, uh, pressed them down just a bit uh, on the top and gave them a quick sprinkle with some salt that's optional. I definitely think it makes a difference in a good way. Uh, so here we go. So this is them, fresh out of the oven. Uh, they'll definitely need to hang out on the cookie sheet for at least five, 10 minutes, and then I'll transfer them to a wire rack to cool all the way. Once you can move them, you can eat them. Uh, but until then, best to hold off. They'll probably fall apart. They're a little fragile. So here they are on the cooling rack. This is the first batch. Uh, yes, there are only seven cookies and there were eight on the cookie sheet. <laughs> the second cookie sheet is still in the oven. They're cooling and one of the things I really love about this recipe that I forgot to mention is it doesn't make a ton of cookies. Uh, the size I made them, it made about uh, 20. So, you know, uh, sometimes you want a few dozen cookies and other times maybe uh, just, uh, just a few will do. So this recipe is great for that too. I hope that if you make them, you like them. And I really hope you check out Hoopla. I really, if you haven't been there before, I think you're gonna love it.